Welcome to the Lens at 177 and today we are sitting down with the newly appointed Supervisor of Elections, Anna Matejdiwa. Welcome to the program and thank you for accepting this invitation to talk to us. Let's begin uh, with the first question. Uh, we all know you're a lawyer. You could be spending time in a law firm, uh, easy life. Why did you decide to get into the elections office? Thank you, uh, Anish, and thank you for uh, inviting me into this uh, program. Um, Yes, rightfully uh, said, um, I'm a lawyer by profession, but then in uh, 2014, the uh, Fijian Elections Office was established. And so I saw that as an opportunity uh, to be part of history because uh, we just came out of uh, one of our major political events of the nation and uh, there was a lapse in election and uh, the country was uh, gathering for a first election after that uh, political event and I said oh why not I should be part of history and uh, join the Fijian elections office and uh, I've never looked back since. Mm -hmm. For this job, were you interviewed uh, by somebody, uh, or was it yes. offered? Yes, um, in 2014, uh, the uh, uh, some um, positions were uh, advertised because it was the first time that they were going to establish the Fijian Elections Office, and the Electoral Act just came in place, which uh, was a legal mandate to. Uh, uh, basically established Fijian Elections Office. So uh, the voter and registration uh, coordinator post was advertised together with other um, uh, positions. I saw an interest in applying for it because it dealt with uh, procedures surrounding election and I went for the interview. Um, the panelists include some of the uh, electoral uh, commissioners then and uh, uh, also uh, some technical uh, advisors. Mm -hmm. You think you are up to the job of delivering the responsibilities of the office? Yes, when I came in 2014 I came in as the uh, coordinator and uh, the panel they asked me uh, when you leave this organization where do you see yourself and I confidently said that I see myself as the supervisor of elections because I saw the role and uh, I knew that uh, with time I'll be able to uh, deliver on what's uh, expected from me and uh, in the law. Mm. You seem very calm, collected uh, and thoughtful but uh, let me ask you this. Uh, uh, describe for me uh, what do you uh, sorry, describe for me when does the job become tense uh, in the okay. time you have been in the office? Well, uh, it's uh, tense every day because we deal with uh, different stakeholders. We deal with the political parties, we deal with the uh, parliamentarians as well as the union and then we have the uh, civil society organization and of course our general public. So uh, coming to work every day it's uh, tense but I think uh, for me it's to do with your mindset. So uh, I know that uh, I'm there to deliver a job that is uh, clearly mandated in the law and uh, I'm in a position where I can uh, change to transform and not conform and so with that tense I take it as an opportunity to have an impact in the nation in the decisions I make mm -hmm. positive impact of course usually people have mentors uh, who they look up to do you have one well um, when I came in 2014 I was uh, exposed to different technical advisors and I was also um, moved around in de uh, different departments of the organization. So when I uh, took up the position of the supervisor of election, uh, I've gone through the entire process and uh, I know enough to help me in the decisions I make. Uh, Mentor-wise, we have advisors uh, in the office, we have our legal team, we have our communication team, as well as our operations team, which includes the staff in the office that provides me uh, facts and information that would enable me to make a right decision. Mm. So at the moment, it's just me and my team. Mm. 
Let's talk about those decisions you've been making. Uh, already you have started facing criticism for some of the refer referrals you've made to FICAC. Are you aware of these criticisms? Well, uh, not only in the job I have, I'm sure your job as well, criticism comes. And uh, with uh, social media and uh, uh, people having a way of expressing themselves, to me when I look at uh, criticism, uh, we have to take it in a positive way. Um, in the offers when I receive all this criticism and it's filtered through our communication team, one thing is for us to listen to those criticism because when you're criticized, those that are criticizing you wants to be heard. So you need to have that humility spirit to listen to what actually are they talking about. And the second would be the issues, whether the issues are valid <coughs> or whether it's uh, just them venting. And with that, then, I'll be able to uh, make a sound decision on how to respond in a more, let's just say, more wisdom to be put in the response. Some criticism, we just leave it at that because it's just them uh, trying to express themselves. Those that needs to be addressed, we address it. So the format on in general, is he wanting to be heard or is he venting? Well, uh, it depends on uh, how he perceives the content of uh, uh, him maybe criticizing. But uh, from the Fijian elections office, like I said, when we see the criticism, we see the content, whether the content needs to be addressed or we just leave it at rest. And we can address it at another time. Your family, how, uh, do you go home, your, your children, your parents? Uh, they tell you, you you're on television, you've been in the newspaper, so-and-so has said about you this and that. Does that conversation happen? Um, I'm so blessed that I have uh, families that keep me grounded and they respect the boundaries as well. So uh, when I go home, I'm just Anna. And uh, the issues that are raised in the media, it's not talked about and they respect that uh, boundary. So I come in and I have a ninth month old baby. I automatically go into motherhood uh, at home and, uh, <coughs> and actually I'm looking after my parents as well. So nothing politics is discussed at home. It's just you and how you're doing things. Let me ask you, uh, you have a lot of pieces of legislation that you look after. I see you've uh, got both of them. <laughs> you've got the Electoral Act 2014, Political Parties Registration Conduct and Funding Disclosures Act. You've got the electrical, uh, sorry, Electoral uh, Registration and Voters Act 2012. And uh, you also the Registrar of Political Parties. Are these too many laws on your plate uh, or can they be simplified into something simpler for the SOE to follow? So we actually have three laws and then we have the constitution. For evidence uh, sake, I brought it uh, for you to cite. But uh, <coughs> these uh, laws, the um, actually uh, laws that are interlinked, so they need to be uh, looked after by uh, the supervisor of election is also the register of political parties and also the register of voters. Mm -hmm. If we separate uh, the laws, then we are looking at uh, three different decision uh, makers, which could then cause uh, disagreements and could affect the end uh, users. The three laws that we have, like for the uh, National Register of Voters uh, laws, it deals specifically with uh, how we do registration for voters, just that. For the political parties, it looks at the administration of the uh, political parties. And the Electoral Act, it's more concerned of the overarching administration of uh, the Fijian Elections Office, as well as the Electoral Commission. So um, uh, with these three laws uh, together, it's doable. And we have been uh, implementing it according to what's been uh, required of us, and uh, yes. Uh, if it, if we are looking at uh, simplifying it, that's where our awareness can come in to make it more user-friendly for the uh, stakeholders to understand. 
Uh, is there some discussion with the with your line ministry to simplify these laws? The uh, multinational observer group had also recommended uh, for the laws to be simplified. Um, this could be something that will be uh, that could be discussed in the review of these three electoral laws. And these are also some uh, things that have been brought up during our review of the 2022 general elections. So uh, the stick. Oh. Uh, our stakeholders, <coughs> they actually want it uh, simplified. So this is something that we'll need to uh, talk about during the review. Mm. And also part of the review in the 2022 joint election report, the EC has recommended uh, together with FEO that the register of political parties be a separate person from yourself. Do you yes. agree with that? Uh, if we look at our joint report, <coughs> Uh, that was just a further recommendation of the Electoral uh, Commission. Uh, for us, at the moment, the Constitution uh, expects the supervisor of election to be the uh, National Register of Voters as well as the Register of Political Parties. Until the Constitution changes, then we could agree to such uh, recommendation. But otherwise, we will just leave it as it is. <laughs> What are you finding about political parties and politicians? Are they aware of all the laws related to elections uh, in Fiji in the time you've been in this office? So uh, one thing that uh, we've discussed with them and uh, it also comes up during our meeting is the law is there, but it's the matter of understanding it. There is an uh, presumption for them to understand but uh, just like with any lay person in order for a lay person to understand it needs to be related to them in simple uh, English. The way laws are written uh, lawyers are able to uh, explain it because that's what they've studied but right now we should remember the end users so we're moving towards um, taking away that presumption and dealing with the reality of the matter. Most don't uh, understand it. They are aware of the three laws, but they don't understand how to implement it. So that is something that we are going to work towards in helping our stakeholders understand the provisions of the law and how they could action it so that they don't breach it. Do you get or did you get scared for the first time when you sat in a room with all these political party leaders? Um, I'm going to be honest then. So um, when I came in, I mean, we're dealing with politicians and all. So as humans, we will have that uh, bit of uh, being scared. But then I had to uh, remind myself, which all comes back to the mindset, that you are there to do a job. They are mere humans, you are also a uh, human, you know your job, they think that they know your job, but it's how you implement the law that is right there before you. So that's all is me. Supervisor of Elections will take a short break and continue the discussion on the other side. Thank you. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. Welcome back and Supervisor of Elections Anna Matidiwa is uh, speaking to us today. Uh, continuing with the discussion uh, SOE, uh, since taking office, uh, uh, what have you seen to be the challenges facing the election system in Fiji. All right, thank you. So one of the uh, main challenge that we have to work towards now is the uh, voter turnout. Uh, we've had three uh, general elections and uh, we've seen the decrease in the uh, voter turnout. Now with our um, election system, uh, in order for the public to exercise their right to vote, they have to register first, and then they'll have to voluntarily take themselves to the polling station to vote. So it's a voluntary system. 
And with voluntary system, um, there comes the responsibility as well. So what we've noted is the reduction in the uh, voter turnout. Uh, 2014, uh, maybe because it was the first election, we had uh, 80 plus, <coughs> and then it reduced uh, 2018 to 70 plus. Now it's further reduced to 68. And so uh, that is one of the uh, issues mm. that we have to address in preparation for the next general election. <coughs> Simple is to make voting compulsory. Uh, it could, but uh, the other way we have to look at it is when we make things compulsory, then it has to come with repercussion as well. Like if they don't attend, then there could be a fine. And so we are we are basically criminalizing um, a political right of a person. So from our end, it's it's just a matter of fine tuning how we do our voter awareness, civic education, to uh, ensure that they do come. We do not want to, uh, you know, criminalize these uh, activities, and then it creates fear again. Mm. Uh, political parties have also called for opportunity to bring voters to the polling booths themselves. Is that option on the table if it comes to decision time in 2026 that political parties be allowed to bring voters to the So um, when we were discussing with our um, uh, stakeholders, uh, including the, uh, not only political parties, even the uh, general uh, public had raised this as well. Mm -hmm. Their previous experience of how election was done uh, prior to 2014 and what has been happening. So uh, it all comes back to the review of the law. Um, when the opportunity arises and uh, our stakeholders are consulted, then this could be reflected in the uh, law and then it creates this uh, festive environment as well for the uh, elections. Let me ask you this then, uh, the current laws that are there, were they tailor-made to benefit one political party? Um, I cannot speak to that uh, regard because I do not know the intention of uh, those provisions being made then, but what I could say moving forward for the elections office, we are in a uh, consultative uh, approach now, whereby uh, provisions were there, uh, we'll give opportunities to the stakeholders if they believe things need to change in order to make it more inclusive, then we will include it for the review. Mm. Let's talk about integrity of the elections. Uh, you have been there, you've said in the office for long. Uh, I know you have the in and out of how the operations of FEO goes by. Talk about the integrity of the office. Uh, can Fijians believe in how that office operates? So uh, when we did our vision, mission, and guiding principle for the 2024 to 2027 strategic plan, that was one of our guiding uh, principle, integrity. So integrity, for us, we defined it as Fijian elections offers upholding the law that's uh, there. And when it comes to implementing it, uh, for the uh, office, we ensure that uh, <coughs> the uh, staff sign a declaration confirming that they hold on to these um, principles. And we also ensure that this principle is reflected in the way we do things moving forward uh, for the elections uh, office. But that integrity is questionable when you haven't produced the report of the glitch that took place in the last elections. Yes. So how do you address that? Well, uh, with regards to the uh, glitch, uh, this is a black cloud that's been hanging over our head since last year. And uh, we have, basically we have exhausted all that we could legally to bring to attention that this uh, glitch needs to come to an end and we need to see the report as well. Uh, the glitch, it was something that was uh, being um, informed to the public that um, the uh, Attorney General and the Solicitor General would look into this report. 
from the Fijian Elections Office uh, side. We've provided all the information that needs to be given to them to help them with their audit. And just like the general public, we are waiting for that audit as well because there is a lot of theories that are going around with regards to glitch and we need to put that to rest and the only way is when we receive this audit so uh, i'm glad that you brought it up because this could be an opportunity to for me to uh, plea with the attorney general and the solicitor general's office to please submit the audit uh, glitch report mm. so do you know if, if an audit has taken place and who has done this doesn't done this audit well, uh, we've provided all the information that needs to be done. Whether it has been done or not, that will be left to the uh, AG and the SG to answer it. But at this stage, we are just waiting uh, for the glitch report. And uh, we have to be mindful to uh, when there is a delay in glitch, mm. it's costly as well because uh, we have a warehouse that consists of all the 2022 general election materials and uh, we are preparing uh, now for the next uh, general election. Uh, financial constraints are there and uh, even uh, the public, like you said, that integrity, that trust, it will only be resolved when all these issues are put to rest. Mm. As supervisor of elections then, would you want to conduct the 2026 elections with this glitch report hanging over your head? Well, definitely not. And I'm sure our stakeholders uh, as well, they wouldn't want to uh, participate in the electoral process with that theory hanging over their head. Uh, is my vote going to go into a sort of another second episode of glitch or not? So for the Fijian Elections Office, we want to put it to rest and we move forward. Mm. Mm -hmm. You were there on the night the glitch, alleged glitch happened? I'm glad I was at the uh, National Council Center. God was so good to us, he removed us from the situation. Whatever transpired in the results center, it's left to those that uh, were part of it through the uh, glitch report, if it does come out for them to deal with that issue. But uh, the uh, overall for the Fijian Elections Office, I'll reiterate again, because this is an opportunity for us to continue to re reiterate that we need the glitch report as well to put things to rest. You've said you've sent findings from the FEO to the Solicitor General and the Attorney General. In two words, was the glitch deliberate or not deliberate? Well, when we're looking at the uh, glitch, when there's an audit, this won't be a two, it'll be a two paragraph for you. <laughs> uh, <coughs> from our end, we can't touch the system because once we touch the system, then it, it will uh, look as if we are trying to manipulate the system. That's why it needs to be independently audited. But the preliminary findings that we did was what transpired from what was inputted in the system. So we have the uh, results management system, which is what needs to be audited. And then we have the uh, results app. The uh, results app is an online uh, platform, whereas the uh, system is an offline. So our findings showed that the data pulled from the system to the um, app was a wrong data. Now that's just a, a preliminary finding. But to actually find whether there was indeed a third party interference, then the system needs to be looked at. And that can only be confirmed when there is an audit, which is the glitch report. Okay, that brings me to the question. Is Fiji's election system currently as it is, cyber free? Cyber, sorry, uh, cyber threat free. Okay. When we deal with a system, whether it be an election system or any form of system, it will always come with uh, cyber threats. <coughs> now for the uh, election system, there's different processes. Uh, we have the uh, voting, that's manual. The counting, that's manual. 
but when we um, introduce a system such as the uh, results uh, system in which the glitch had uh, occurred, then that's where from uh, elections office that's where we'll need to see whether it was uh, whether risk were identified and whether it could be mitigated. So moving forward, what we didn't do then, which we are doing now, is basically reviewing the whole systems that we use in the electoral processes and check uh, the risk that could happen to it and the probable mitigation factors. So as of elections, we'll take another break and continue the discussion after Thank that. You. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. Welcome back, and today we are talking to the Supervisor of Elections, Anna Matidiwa. Uh, welcome uh, back to the third segment, and the final Thank segment. You. My first question, how is your relationship with the current chairperson of the Electoral Commission? <laughs> um, I would say it's a very professional um, relationship. I mean, uh, in any form there could be disagreements uh, that are happening, but the end of the day, uh, I'm there to serve the people. So whatever I'm feeling, it's uh, irrelevant to the position I'm holding because we need to be professional in ensuring that we conduct an election that is user-friendly to the nation. Uh, there was social media stories going on that uh, you were being replaced uh, uh, also on social media that the EC chair had written uh, uh, to COC asking for your removal. Uh, were you aware of all this and did both of you get together to iron this situation out? Whether she indeed asked for your removal or not? Well, uh, up until to date, I have not seen the content of the uh, supposed letter, but I've seen the events that have uh, transpired when those uh, news uh, uh, came into light. <coughs> but um, then again, uh, it all comes back to uh, just being honest and having an honest discussion. I would have uh, appreciated if uh, there was indeed an intention for me to know of it before the public knew of it. Uh, but that's water under the bridge now. Uh, we will always have uh, criticism, disagreements, but that should not be a uh, distraction from the uh, roles that I need to do according to law. With all the laws you have, who has more powers? Chairperson of the EC currently or SOE? Well, as it is uh, at the moment, uh, with all these amendments that were happening and whatnot, the uh, supervisor of election uh, has uh, powers <coughs> that are more. This is because uh, the Fijian Elections Office, which the supervisor of election heads, is an operational arm. Mm. So the powers uh, there are more as compared uh, to our electoral uh, commission. Mm. The former supervisor of elections before you uh, had a knack to refer politicians to FICAC for investigations for small infringements uh, on the eve of the polls. Will you take that same step or will you be more consolidating? Um, we've seen the uh, actions that had uh, taken place for the past three general elections like you've uh, mentioned. Uh, moving forward, we are custodian of the law, but it all comes back to the review of the uh, laws. Some of the uh, referrals were mainly to do with campaign infringements, which uh, have now been brought to light by our stakeholders. There is an intention to have it more friendly. <coughs> and so when we have the uh, amendments, uh, when we have the reviews to the current electoral laws and we have the amendments coming in place, then uh, for us, we will uh, action according to what uh, the law 
expects mm. us to do. With all the referrals uh, you make to FICAC, uh, it takes time for them to investigate and come back to you. Uh, do you think there should be a time frame on within this many days or weeks a case should be investigated and mm. decided? Um, for the um, complaints that I've uh, referred to uh, FICAC, uh, and this could be an opportunity as well for me to um, um, probably uh, make people understand of what I'm doing because uh, what's happening now is only that a woman is full of complaint and uh, passing everything to FICAC, but uh, there is a process. According to law, I'm required to um, um, submit to FICAC um, complaints that I receive because they are actually the um, investigative arm of uh, things that are of breach in the electoral laws. Now when it uh, comes to the current uh, complaints, when it goes to FICAC, it's for them to assess whether there is actually a probable commission of an uh, offence. Those uh, that have been complained, uh, they are still innocent until proven guilty with regards to the uh, timeline. Um, as much as we want to put a deadline uh, for FICAC to respond, we must also understand the uh, nature of the complaint. Some of this nature of complaint, it deals with uh, them having to gather information, not only locally, but abroad as well. So that will take time. Mm -hmm. And so at the moment, it's just a matter of us communicating with uh, FICAC and respecting uh, their role as well, and just having that open communication on this is where we're up to mm -hmm. with regards to the complaints. With all the referrals you've made so far, uh, were they your loan decision or did you consult somebody? So, um, although I have a legal background, one thing I uh, ensured was not to give legal opinion to myself. Um, we have a set of uh, team in the office, we have our um, uh, legal advisors in the office, we have uh, the auditors in the office, as well as the uh, complaints team they assess these um, complaints and then we just refer it uh, to FICAC so it is not an uh, independent decision. It's basically the facts that have been provided to me that has enabled me to make those decisions. Mm. The Electoral Commission and the Fijian Elections of Joint Report on the 2022 election talks about legislative stability in the election year. Mm. We all know election year is 2026 or early 27. Yeah. Could you explain uh, what this means? Legislative uh, stability. Um, this came from the experience of the uh, previous uh, elections. So um, when we were into election uh, year, some amendments were still being made to the uh, laws. Now this had a replica effect on uh, operations. And uh, when we are looking at election stability, it's basically reviewing these electoral laws prior to the election year so that uh, people can understand and then they are aware of the uh, laws that governs election rather than making all these drastic changes on election year and confusing them. And one of the examples was the uh, change in the uh, uh, voter card, the name. Eh? That caused a lot of confusion. And, and probably uh, that is something that uh, we have to address now moving forward. Having the review of the general election uh, laws prior to the election year so that we have uh, a legal mandate that people will be able to understand and implement on the election year. That change in law in regards to the voter cards, was it politically motivated? Um, that could be something that the 
previous administration could answer to but uh, from our end we are just uh, moving forward and uh, the laws have reverted back and operationally we've uh, also uh, action as per the uh, new amendments. Mm. You work with the former supervisor of elections in your dealings with him. Uh, did you at any time see the possibility that he was politically biased? Um, working with the previous uh, supervisor of election, uh, my role is uh, basically to provide him uh, legal advice. He was to make decisions on those uh, advice. The intention of that decision, uh, that is something that uh, he could answer to uh, himself. But uh, for us at the Fijian Elections Office and the staff, we did our work according to what was expected of us from the law. Let me ask you again. Did you have an inkling that he was politically biased? I can have my own uh, feelings of it. You might have your own feelings of it. Those in the office can have their own feelings of it, but then it would all become hearsay. So unless there is an evidence, and unless we are in his mind to see what he really thought, uh, that's where we stand at the moment. Voters, you've spoken about how you can improve or want to improve a, a voter turnout, but why, why does an election, why, why should an election matter to the voters? Um, election should matter to the uh, voters because at the end of the day, your vote really does count. And uh, you are the uh, decision makers of those that will make decision on your behalf. And it is really important for voters to come out and exercise their right to vote. Otherwise, we will be uh, discussing matter of national interest in a different pla platform that, that may cause some action, may cause some reaction, but will not solve the problem of putting those that needs to be put in there, that needs to do the work for the people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about voting machines? Uh, it has been talked about before. Would you, would, you, would you discuss that or want voting machines to be introduced? Uh, it comes again to that glitch. Once we have the uh, glitch report and it's sorted, we do not want to introduce any other system that could cause more uh, theories to come out. Um, with regards to voting machine, we have introduced it for the union election. Um, some. Uh, feedbacks from the union. Um, they like the use of uh, the voting machine, but in the national level, um, we are not uh, ready for it until the perception of the end users change, which is the uh, voters. We may introduce it when the time is right. Mm. Okay, let's talk about uh, uh, the election date. Uh, some countries set election dates year out, uh, months out. In Fiji, uh, what is the perceived time frame you want that you know that this is the election date? Uh, having an election date announced, it is not only uh, beneficial to us at the elections office, but also to our stakeholders. It would have enough time for the uh, media to have their logistics around covering the uh, elections for the political parties to uh, prepare for the election as well as for the CSOs to do their campaign awareness on election and as well as for us because it's the biggest logistic uh, exercise. So of course uh, it will be good to uh, be able to know the election date way before so that everyone could be prepared and especially on our voters as well because that could also contribute on uh, the voter turnout. Just I'm sure with you, just like with me, I would want to know when I could attend such important uh, event, especially when it deals with me casting my vote as well as you on who's going to be sitting for the next uh, how many years to deal with uh, the issues that we want to be addressed in the national level. Mm. You've spoken about the integrity and transparency of the election. Let's say for uh, 
sake of uh, what happened uh, with the last election, if the Minister for Justice wants to visit the counting centre in 2026, will you allow that to happen under your watch, no. knowing that he is a candidate and also a party member? Uh, with us, the law is quite specific on who needs to be where on election uh, day. And uh, the uh, National Account Center, as reflected in the current law, it only authorizes certain people, but not candidates. And that is the stand that we will take if that uh, provision still uh, exists in the next uh, election date. So we are custodian of the law. We are having, uh, we are coming with the equal playing field, whether you the uh, Attorney General or whether you are a member of Parliament. On election day, we will implement the law as it is. If you are not required to be there, then you should not be there. So the former Attorney General is present at the presence at the counting centre with the supervisor of elections, previous supervisor of elections, was wrong. Uh, there was a misunderstanding on that, um, I believe it was a photo that was taken. Now we have the uh, National Count Center and we have the National Results Center. Whether he was actually at the Count Center, I did not see it, so I would not attest to it, but the photo that was circulated was in the uh, Results Center. So uh, legally in the Results Center, um, those that are allowed to come in and observe, it includes those um, apart from election officials, the multi-observer group, and, and as well as candidates, because it deals with their results. Mm -hmm. So that was at the uh, results center. By experience, the former supervisor of elections uh, wasn't a friend of some of the media practitioners. So why are you sitting down here talking to me today? Uh, thank you, Anish. Well, um, basically, we are at the stage of amending our relationship with our stakeholders, and uh, we have been doing that since last year, and uh, we know we can do it alone. We need your help, and uh, the media is quite important to us because you will dis disseminate information with regards to election. Though we may have disagreements, but that's where professionalism comes in because we have to be mindful of the end users, which are our general public and the voters. So that's why I'm here, basically to mend that relationship and we have this um, platform where we can share our election information so, so that there is consistency in the dissemination of it. Supervisor of Elections, Anna Matidiwa, thank you for speaking to me. Thank you. <laughs>